Okay, so I have my 10 inches. It took me 16 rows to get the 10 inches in length. And uh, in fact, I ended up going back to the eight millimeter hook and staying with it. Um, again, this is all experimentation. You're gonna kind of use the method that works for you and that you like. That's the beautiful thing about creating is you make it personal to you. So after that whole thing about different hooks, the eight millimeter did stay nice and consistent and um, that's what I stuck with. So here we are, we've got the cuff done. We've now gone down the side uh, or down the leg and now we're gonna start the heel. So for the heel, what I'm gonna do is I'm using two strands of the blue because now um, it's one thing for the trim to be doing two rows of slip stitches, but now we really have to be comparable to the other yarn weight. So I'm gonna use two strands for the blue and we're gonna start our heel. So I'm just gonna snip off my yarn here for my silver and I'm just gonna fasten that and I'll weave in my tail afterwards. Um, okay, so we have, or I have 42 stitches in total. So what we wanna do, we're going to work the heel, and in order to work the heel, we need to do a an initial row of 21 stitches with our blue. So I have 42, I'm cutting that in half, and that's gonna be the base or the top part of our heel. 21 stitches. Now, remember we've been turning back and forth to create our seam along the back of our, um, the back of our stocking. Now, because this yarn is so bulky, you can just see faintly how it's kind of going up the side there. But because we turned back and forth, it was able to stay relatively straight up there. So what you wanna do is you wanna find exactly the center and for me, it's going to be where I snipped my yarn. And I'm just gonna put a stitch marker here just so I remember. So that's gonna be our center stitch. Okay, so if we want to have 21 stitches in total, that means we're gonna have 10 on this side and 10 on this side. We are now gonna work um, starting on the right side. So I'm gonna have my work this way. And there is my, just gonna tuck my tail in there. Here's my safety pin. That is going to be the middle stitch, okay? And then, so what I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna count 10 stitches over. So I'm gonna ignore that knot there. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. I'm just gonna insert my hook here just to mark my spot and I'm gonna get my yarn. Okay, so I've got my blue and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed it through this first stitch and I'm gonna chain one. And just like that, okay? And now, and I'm gonna work over this. I'm just gonna tie one little knot here and I'm gonna work over this tail just to give it a little bit of security. Okay, so now we're just gonna use um, single crochets right now. So we're gonna go back into the same stitch we just came out of. You're gonna insert and do a single crochet. And now we're just gonna single crochet for 20 stitches more. So this counts as one. And remember the um, safety pin just helped mark our center. So that's all we're gonna do. One single crochet for a total of 21 stitches. I'm gonna try to work over my tail here. Just like that. So this is my, that was my 10th stitch, whoops. And now I've come to where the safety pin is and that is my 11th stitch. 
so which is right there so I'm just going to insert I'm going to actually work over my silver tail a little bit here so I've gone 10 11 stitches and now I need another 10 on the other side okay so we just did that so our back seam sits right in the center of our heel so just continue until you get your 21 stitch total and then we'll take it from there Twenty and twenty-one. I did forget to mention, it just so happens that I had 42 stitches, but that also was part of a plan. You want your number to be divisible by three. So 42 divides by three 14 times, which is great. So when I divided um, 42 in half, I have 21. And 21 divided by three gives you seven. And that's really important for forming the heel, which I'm gonna explain right now. So you have your 21 stitches. So when you're working the heel, you need to have a number divisible by three. So not so much here, but when you're working on the leg or the cuff, you have to remember that your stitch count will affect how you're able to work the heel. So I've got 21. Now we're gonna chain one and then turn our work. And now we're gonna go two thirds of the way back across. So when you divide 21 by three, that gives you seven. And if we wanna do two thirds of the way, we multiply seven by two. So that gives us 14, okay? So we are going to go back. So we just chained one. We're going to go back into the stitch we came out of. And that's one, two, 13, and 14. Okay. So you can see now, hopefully you can, that we've gone back two thirds of the way. You're now going to chain your work. Sorry, chain your work. You're now going to chain one. We're going to turn our work again. And now we're going to go halfway across. So the first row of our heel had 21 stitches. The second row of our heel will have 14. The third row will have seven. Okay. So you could say that you keep dividing it in half each time. So again, hopefully that blue yarn is not too cumbersome for you guys to see. So I've chained one. I'm going to go right back into the same stitch. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so you have something that looks a little bit weird. It looks something like this. Okay, so you've got little step coming out. This is the base of our heel and now how we proceed is what's going to form that kind of cupping shape around our heel. So don't panic, it's supposed to look like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to chain one and turn and then we're going to do eight stitches across. So we're going to go into the same one we started with and I know what you're thinking, we've only got seven stitches. But I will show you once we get there. So we have three, four, five, six, and this is our seventh stitch here. And we need to do eight. So once you reach the end, what we're going to do is we're going to reach down to the next row 
and that's this one right here. So we're skipping down and we're going to just do a single crochet as usual. But what you wanna do is make sure that your working yarn is nice and tight, okay? We don't want that stitch to be loose because the whole point is to make it gather and pucker. So you can see it's starting to round out there, okay? Then we will chain one and turn our work. Now we have eight stitches to work into, so we're gonna work nine. So we keep increasing the stitches by one. And this is just one of many different techniques to create a heel. So I'm gonna go back into that same stitch. That's one, two, three, seven, eight, and our ninth one is a step down. So the next stitch would be down here. Okay, so I know it feels weird, but you're gonna insert into that one again, very tightly holding our working yarn. Pull through and resolve that single crochet. Oops, nice and tight, okay. Now we've puckered it out. And that's what we want. So you can see, hopefully, that it's starting to bow in like that, and that's exactly what we want to have happen, okay? So we will continue again, chain one. So that was round four of our heel. Sorry, row four. We're now gonna do row five. So we need nine stitches. So we go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Sorry, we needed 10 in total. So we went back nine across. And remember, we have to go to the next one, which is that jog down here. So we just go down here and hold that working yarn and cinch it tight. So hopefully you can start seeing the pattern here. So every time, see how it's bowing down that way? So every time you get to the end of your row, you need to do one extra so that it brings that side down. So we now have 10 stitches. So hopefully you, you know what we're going to do next. We're going to chain one and we're going to turn our work and we now want to go back 11 stitches. The 10 we just did plus an additional. And you keep doing that back and forth, back and forth until you get to the end of your blue or your heel. Okay. So I'm going to do this one one more time with you and then I will let you finish the heel on your own. So we go back into that same stitch for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, that's our last stitch. And now we need to go a step down for our 11th one, which is right here. So you just keep going until basically you run out of your blue row at the very end. So now we've got 11 stitches going across. So now you should really be able to see that it's, it's rounding out. And if I just pucker it that way, you should be able to see that it's starting to take shape there. There we go. So now you can really see that the heel is taking shape, okay? So I'm gonna let you finish the heel and then I'll meet you when you've run out of <laughs> blue stitches, basically. So off you go and I'll see you back here in a few minutes. I'm almost at the end here, but I wanted to kind of come back on and I forgot to tell you one thing, as you're ending up 
your heel or you're ending off your heel. Once you get down to your last two stitches in your blue, this is what you want to be aware of. So this is my last single crochet from the step up. I'm going to step down as usual and single crochet tightly. Oops. Yeah. Single crochet into that next stitch tightly. And into the last stitch, when you have one left, I'm going to slip stitch. And then you will officially be done your heel. Okay. So now if I sit my heel down like this, you can see now it's definitely starting to round out nicely like a heel. Now, I had what I had just done with the slip stitching of the last one, still going to leave you up here with a bit of a jog. Don't panic. Um, this is my last row or the last end here. So that one is going to look a bit funny. On this side, I really hope you can see this with the blue yarn. On this side, when I slip stitched, it stayed a little bit closer to the silver. Still got a bit of a jog there. Um, but when we reintroduce the silver, which we're going to do right now, um, this will get, this little step down will disappear. So I'll show you that. So um, again, my seam, my little jog is back there. And because it's right on the back, I fold it like that. No one can see it. And so the back of my heel runs along there. So that way I know I can fold my stocking in half. And there you go. So that is how a heel is formed. And a lot of times this is the same idea they use for making for crocheting socks. So if I open that up, you can see that it's uh, rounded out there and makes for perfect heel. So now I'm going to snip off my blue and I won't need this again until we start doing the toe. Okay, so we are bringing back in our silver yarn. Really love how the blue and the silver are coming together. Okay, so, and by the way, if you're ever unsure if you did it correctly, you wanna count the number of stitches. So you know how we had 21 stitches when we first started? By the time you finish your heel, you should have 21 stitches going from one end of the heel to the other in your final row. And I do have 21 stitches, so I know I'm A-OK. -okay. And what you wanna do here now when we go back to the heel is you wanna start in the center of your heel because you want your joints all to kind of work out in the crease so they get hidden nicely. So you're gonna count and you're gonna find your 11th stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So that's my 11th stitch right there. Perfect. You're gonna insert your hook just so that you know where you are so you can see it's nicely in the center. And I'm just going to introduce my yarn. Now you can put a slip stitch on beforehand. Sorry, a slip knot. Can't speak today. You can put a slip knot on your hook beforehand if you like. Totally up to you. And I'm just going to pull that through and chain one to secure. Okay. Now I would like to go back to the artistic crochet stitch for the part of the foot here. So I am going to go back into that same stitch and I'm gonna do a half double crochet. Remember, each round has to start with a half double, right back into that same stitch. And again, you wanna be relaxed with that because we're gonna be working into that bottom strand. So there we go, that's your half double. Now, again, we're gonna go back into finding the bottom strand first, loop, pull through, and now we go into the very next stitch right there, pull through, keeping it nice and relaxed, three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three, okay? And then again, in this stitch, the bottom strand or the bottom loop 
is right there. Pull through, go into the next stitch, pull through, keeping it relaxed, three loops, yarn over, pull through all three. Okay, and that's what you're going to do just until you get to your, just before you get to your very last stitch here, I'm going to meet up with you and we're going to talk about how we're going to kind of seam our, our crease there together. So I'll meet you back here shortly. Okay, so I now have my last stitch here. This was the side that I fastened off. I'm just going to tuck that tail in there for later. So what we want to do here to kind of join these two sides is a decrease stitch. And that's when you take two stitches and make them into one. So I have one more stitch here. So I'm going to start my artistic single crochet as usual. I'm going to go into that bottom loop, pull through. Now this is part of the previous stitch. So we're going to go into the next stitch as we normally would. It might be a little bit tighter there and pull through. So keeping it relaxed. So we've got three loops like we would normally work that stitch, but we're not going to resolve it just yet. What we're going to do is we're going to jog down to that next stitch there, insert our hook and pull through. So you will actually have four loops on your hook. Cause remember this one right here was the one we took from the bottom strand. So really we're stitching this stitch and this stitch together. Once you've got these four loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through all four of them. And as you can see, what it does is it bunches them all together and it just kind of snuggles these two sides in and, and basically closes the gap between the heel and the foot. Now you're back into working your regular silver stitches. So we go on as usual. You go into the leg here or the bottom strand, which might be a little bit snug and you pull through and you go into the very next stitch, pull through and work your artistic single crochet as usual. Okay. So do that again. This point, you probably a pretty good pro at this stitch. Now, if you're a stickler for these little gaps here, teeny tiny little gaps, um, you can go in later with a darning needle and just kind of um, whip stitch that in, but I'm pretty happy with that. So you can see now we're just going to continue on all the way around and we're going to do the same thing when we come up to this corner here. So it's not so much of a sharp um, bend. We're going to do a decrease stitch that'll bring these two together. So go ahead, do your stitches one into each all the way, and I'll meet you at the other end of the heel. Now guys, I forgot to remind you of one thing. Make sure that you still have one stitch left in order to do the decrease. So if you went right to the end, just pull that one stitch out because you need a free stitch in order to do the decrease. So here we are back at the other end of the heel, insert in that bottom leg, pull through. Okay. Now we're going to go into the last stitch here of our silver and pull through. So you have three loops and this is where we're going to find the next stitch of our blue, which the slip stitch, was actually right there. Be a little testy. And then I'm going to pull through. So you have four loops on your hook. Okay. Then you yarn over and you're going to pull through all four and it's going to bunch those two stitches together. Now you're going to have a wee bit of a little gap here if you pull your work apart, obviously. Uh, if that bothers you, just like I said on the other side, you can go back later and just do a little whip stitch there in the silver color just to bunch it together tightly. But I'm feeling, I feel very confident about how secure this is. Now I would just continue on and work the rest of the heel doing my usual artistic single crochet into that and then into the next one and pull through all three. 
Okay. So again, be careful you don't start tightening them because remember you have to go back into that bottom leg there. And if you stitch too tight, that's going to make things a problem. Okay. So again, see that just kind of smooths out that join. Love that. Okay, so go all the way to the end, slip stitch, and then I'm going to take you through to the next round. All right, I've just done my last stitch here, and now we're going to slip stitch, and I always still go into that bottom loop, pick up, and then I slip stitch into the top of my next stitch, which is right there. And so because we've decreased twice, we went from 42 stitches, and now we're gonna have 40 stitches. So whatever your stitch count is, you're gonna decrease it by two because we did the decreasing here in the corner. So now your work is looking a little something like this. And now we're gonna continue on. So we're pretty much now working on the foot part of the stocking. So we're gonna chain one, and we're gonna continue turning our work. And we're gonna go back into that same stitch, and we're gonna start with our half double crochet, keeping it nice and relaxed as usual. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna stitch across one into each stitch, but we are gonna do another set of decreases again where the heel meets the foot. So go ahead and do that, and then what you wanna do is once you get close to where the heel and the foot meet, we want to leave the last stitch empty. I'm gonna meet you back up here, okay? So um, keep going along, and then I'm gonna meet you just when you've got that last stitch available. Okay, so I now have one more stitch before the decrease. So I can always tell where the decrease is because you can see where the stitches have gathered. So I've got that last stitch left. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to connect um, this stitch with this next stitch. So I'm going to begin as usual. So this decrease is done exactly like we've done the other one. I'm going to go in through that uh, bottom leg there of the stitch I just worked. Then I'm going to go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then I'm going to go into the next stitch and pull up a loop again. So when we're decreasing with this particular stitch, you're going to have four loops on your hook, yarn over, and then you're going to pull through all four of them, okay? So I'll just take that out so you can see. So now it's gonna snuggle in again where the heel meets the foot, just for one more row to give it a little bit more uniformity when we work the rest of the foot. So now you would just continue on as usual. Whoops, I pulled that in a bit too tight there because that is the leg of my last stitch. And that's one thing you do want to be careful is it can be so easy to get excited about that decrease and pull it tight. Pulling it a little too tight, not always good. There we go. So I pull that through and then I work my stitch as usual. Okay, so you're going to continue on. So now I'm working with the inside or the wrong side facing me. Go all the way around. You're gonna do the same thing when you come back to the next join where the heel and the leg meet and you'll leave one stitch remaining before you get there. Then you will stitch these two together, okay? And then you will continue on to the end. You'll slip stitch to join and then I'll meet you back up there. We'll talk about how to move on to the rest of the foot. And now I've just finished my last stitch. Remember that this is a false stitch, we call it. See how something's coming out of it? That's where we chained one to turn. So we don't work into that. 
Otherwise, we're just going to be adding stitches, but I'm going to slip stitch to join. But first, I'm still going to go through that bottom loop there. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the top of that stitch. So we've decreased two in two spots again. So now for me, I am down to 38 stitches for my foot. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this out here. So you can see, oops, okay, so now we've really got the heel formed and now we're working our way out into the foot. So we're not going to decrease anymore for a while now. Now remember that we had 10 inches in length uh, for the leg part of our uh, stocking. So because I had 10 inches, I am now going to continue just doing one stitch into each going all the way around. And I'm going to do that for a total of six inches. Okay. So however many rows that equals for you, depending on your gauge and your yarn, of course. So I've got 10 in length here. So I'm going to do six inches now for the foot. So, um, six inches will, should include actually from the blue portion. So basically from the heel. So that's how I'm going to count my uh, six inches. So technically I've got a little bit over one already done. Again, you want to gauge it. Stop, put your work down, see what it looks like. If you find that the foot looks too short, make a couple more rows. If it's too long, you might want to take out a couple of rows. So now we've, um, we're just going to continue as usual. I've slip stitched to join. You're going to chain one and begin as usual. So we're still going to keep flipping our work so that the stitch um, facing looks consistent. So I am just going to start off by my hat, one half double crochet and then continue as usual. So from now on until I reach my six inches in length for my foot, I'm always going to have 38 stitches. So Whatever your stitch count, just try and keep it consistent. And once you get to your length, I will meet back up with you here and we'll talk about how to move on to our toe. Okay, so I am happy with the way my foot is coming out. And when I measure from this side here, it's actually five inches, but if I move up here, it is indeed six inches. So remember, things will move and shift. I'm really happy with this length, so I'm going to stop here. And I ended up doing about 10 rows. So that will change for you depending on your gauge, of course, and depending on how long you'd like your foot to be. But that's what I've done. So we are now going to move on to the toe. So I am actually just going to leave a bit of a tail here and snip off my silver and reintroduce my blue yarn. Now I'm still going to use the two strands together, but I am actually going to go down now to my 6.5 millimeter hook. Now if I had the opportunity to go to a seven, I would, but I actually don't have a seven millimeter hook and they're actually quite tricky to find. Um, it is an odd sizing. Um, now I know I've seen them in bamboo, but I have to say for me, I'm much more privy to these, um, these aluminum hooks myself. So I just kind of like the, the feel of them. I like the ease of the grip. I know some people really like it with the, the actual grips on them and I'll probably eventually graduate to those, but for now, I'm really happy with these. And this one happens to be made by a company called Boy. Uh, B-O-Y-E, it looks like. Um, this video is not sponsored by them. It's just I know that some of you would be curious and would want to know which hook I'm using. And that's generally uh, the brand I use. may change in the future, but for now, that's what I've got going on. Okay, so I am just going to keep this loop here. So I finished on the outside and now I'm going to keep the right side facing me. So I'm not no longer going to, uh, I'm no longer going to turn my work. I'm just going to keep the right side facing out. So I'm just going to introduce the blue and I'm going to feed it through here. 
and just cinch this tail shut. And usually what I'll do, pull that through a bit, is I'll just tie these two tails together and then I'll weave them in later on. Or if I can work over them as I go, I usually try and do that. So again, I'm reattaching where I left off, which is along the folded seam, which is perfect because nobody will see it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our single crochet stitch, not the artistic single, just a regular single crochet. And we're gonna chain one. And we're just gonna do one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So this is just our established initial row for the toe. So we're gonna go back into that same stitch, pull through. Now because I've got a, I went down a hook size, I don't want to stitch tighter, I just want them to naturally sit a little bit more snug. So still gonna stay fairly relaxed. So one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. I currently have 38 stitches and I should continue having 38 stitches at the end of this round. So hopefully these tails sitting here is not going to confuse you. I like to kind of bring it up close because I know sometimes people want to see detail, but I realize sometimes it might be too close. So I'm going to pull it back a bit. So these are just my tails. I'm just leaving them sitting nicely there and I'll work over them. So now I'm just working into each and every single stitch just a regular single crochet. I'm going to insert and pull through. And because I'm using two strands, I want to make sure that they're always, whoops, see that? I lost one there. So whenever you're using two strands, that type of technique, you always want to keep, make sure you treat the two strands as if they're one. So be careful you don't lose them along the way because that will change the gauge of your work. There we go, just like that. So go ahead and do that. I'll meet you at the end of our first round of our toe, and then we'll discuss what will happen from there. All right, so I've done one round, so it's, my work is looking like that. And I'm just going to slip stitch to join at the very top. I know it's dark, but hopefully you can see that. And so now I've joined my round. So I have 38 stitches. Now what we want to do is we want to start slowly working towards closing in the toe. So we're going to start working some decrease stitches. Now when you're working in the round, a, a general rule that's good to go by, it's, it's the one I use anyway, um, is to start off to, so that your increases are gradual and even. When I have something in the round like this, I like to start decreasing in my what I call the four corners so meaning the if I fold my work in half I've got a crease here and a crease here and then I'd find my center point and I would do a decrease there so those are my four corners of a circle if that makes sense so this is the bottom and the top and these are the two sides a super easy way to figure out where to decrease is to take the number of stitches you have and divide it by four. That'll give you a nice even looking decrease. So I have 38 stitches. When I divide by four, that gives me nine and 9.5 or nine and a half. So what I'm going to do is I, I am going to do a decrease stitch in every eighth stitch. So that means that I will collect my eighth and my ninth stitch together. Okay, so I know that if I divide by four, that gives me nine and a half, and I always decrease that number by one because we are doing a decrease stitch, which decreases your number of stitches. I know that sounds silly, but easy enough to remember. So we always minus one. So because it's eight and a half, we're not gonna worry about the half right now, and. Um, it'll kind of even itself out. So every eighth stitch that I go into, I'm going to stitch the ninth one together with it. At the end of my round, I will be four stitches less, which is what I want. So I'm starting with 38 stitches. I'm going to go down to 34. If that's confusing you, 
Do not worry. Just follow along with me. Okay. So I'm going to start off right away. I'm going to chain one and I am going to do a decrease stitch right away. So that means I'm going to stitch two stitches together. So that means I would stitch this stitch and this one and make them as one. So here's how it's going to happen. Very similar to what we've done before, but now we're just using regular single crochet stitches. So I'm going to insert back into that same stitch I came out of, pull up a loop, but I'm not going to resolve my single crochet. I'm going to go into the very next stitch, insert to pull up a loop, and now I have three loops. Okay, so this is just a regular single crochet. I will then yarn over, and I'm going to pull through all three. And that's a decrease in the single crochet stitches. So now these two stitches became one. So now I'm going to single crochet one into each of the next eight stitches. So I have one, two, three, six, seven, and now into my eighth, I am going to stitch the eighth and the ninth together. So I'll insert into the eighth and pull through, go into the ninth, pull through again, yarn over and pull through all of them. Okay, so I did an, a decrease, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then another increase. So remember the eighth stitch is where we do the in, uh, I'm sorry, the decrease, the decrease, not the increase. Okay, so you'll probably do that a total of four times. You may have a few, you may be a, uh, one or two stitches short at the end or one or two stitches extra because remember it was 9.5, um, but don't worry about that at all. Just follow this pattern and go right to the end. So if you've, if you've done a decrease and you still have two stitches left, for example, um, just go ahead and do the two stitches as usual, slip stitch to join. If you only have six stitches left over at the end instead of seven, that's okay too. Just go ahead and slip stitch at the end wherever you're at. For now, go ahead and continue on with this pattern. I will meet back up with you just as we're about to slip stitch this, just to kind of check in with you and see how things are going. Okay, so I'm now going to continue on and single crochet one into each of the next seven and then decrease my eighth. So as I suspected, I have two extra stitches left. I've done four decreases, one, two, three, and my last decrease was right there, four. So I've done my seven, whoops, and normally I would decrease again, but that would put it a decrease right next to a decrease and I do not want that. I'm just simply going to just finish those stitches, two single crochets, and everything is all right. I'm at the end, and then I'm gonna slip stitch to join as usual. Okay, and so now my toe is looking like this, and you should be able to see that it's just now starting to kind of curve inward. So we are gonna continue in this fashion for every row, um, decreasing uh, every, so you're gonna decrease the number of stitches. So now we've done a decrease in every eighth stitch. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna decrease in every seventh stitch, okay? So I'm gonna take you through that right now. So basically we would continue on with each round until we have about 12 stitches left in the round because every round we will decrease by four. So right now we currently have 34 stitches left. So again, if I take my 34 and divide that by four, I've got eight and a half stitches. So it's just gonna continue decreasing down. So I'm gonna chain one. I'm going to begin by doing a decrease. now. I'm actually gonna preface here some this with something. I don't always like to do the decreases in the exact same spots because it starts taking on a much more linear look. Um, 
So what I'm going to do, because I started with the decrease, I'm actually going to start with the individual stitches first this time. So I'm going to go back into, hopefully it's not too dark, into the same stitch. And I'm just going to do one single crochet, two, three, four, five, and six. Now the next stitch is going to be my seventh and that's where we're going to decrease. So I want you to see, see the decrease from the previous row? I really don't want it to sit on top of it because I find it starts to take on a triangular shape. So I'm really happy for it to end up here because it's nowhere near that decrease. So now this is my seventh stitch. I'm going to pull through and I'm going to go into the next stitch, which is the eighth, and I'm going to pull through two and decrease those two. Okay. So in this round, I did my individual stitches first and then decrease. So you're going to continue for round three of your toe, seven single crochet, I'm sorry, six single crochets, and you're going to decrease the seventh and eighth stitch together all the way around, and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so I finished my round three, and so you can see it's continuing to kind of cinch inward, all right? So I've slip stitched to join. I, I had my two extras at the end like I usually do, and that is a-okay. So I'm going to take you into round four, and then I'm going to leave you to do the rest of the rounds until you get down to 12 stitches. So at this point, I now have 30 stitches, and if I divide that by four, that's seven and a half. So we want to decrease every sixth stitch. So we are going to now start this round with a decrease. So every other round I start with a decrease, every other round I start with the stitches first. So we are going to chain one and go back into that same stitch, pull through, and then into the next stitch. So we've just done our decrease. And now we're going to stitch into each of the next five single crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. And now it's the sixth and the seventh stitch we are going to decrease. So we increase, sorry, we insert and then we insert three loops and we pull through all three. Okay, so we had a decrease, one, two, three, four, five, and then six and seven are together. That is the pattern for this round. So we have again, one, two, three, four, and five. And now we are going to decrease six and seven. Okay, so So at the end of this round, which is round four, we are going to end up with 26 stitches. So as we've discussed before, each time you do this pattern, this type of, so you can see now it's really starting to close in. I want you to go ahead and decrease each round. So we decreased into the sixth, the next round will be decreasing into the fifth stitch, the next round will be the fourth, the third, and so on until you get 12 stitches. And then I'll meet back up with you once you've got 12 stitches left. All right, so this is how my toe is looking. And I'm super happy with how it all came out and how the dimensions worked out. Um, 
So now again, these are just two different textured yarns. So you can see this is where the increase is. That's why I was trying to avoid having increases in the same spot. I just don't like when it shows the, um, the definite bend, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. Also, because I'm using two strands and using a smaller hook, the stitches are sitting a little bit tighter. So that's why you're getting that obvious um, angle there, I guess you could call it. So for the most part, I'm very happy with how this turned out. I have 14 stitches left because again, divided by 4.5s, uh, divided by four, we had some half numbers involved there. Um, 14 stitches is absolutely fine. You might have 13 and that's a-okay too. So now what we're ready to do is we're ready to snip off our yarn. Now, what I want to do is I want to leave a long tail because see how there's still that opening? We're going to cinch in the final few stitches together. So I would say leave about a 12 to 18 inches of a tail. And before I continue, I'm just going to do my chain one here. Pull it through. And there we go. Then I'm going to get my tapestry needle. And I'm going to feed it through. And remember, if you're using the double, double strands like I am, you treat it as one. Again, I'm using this because it was one of the colors I had lying around, and I love this electric blue. But it wasn't the same yarn weight as the other. So just have to get creative. Okay, so all we're going to do is we're going to simply weave in and out of each stitch. And we're going to... Go in and out. Actually, before anything, I almost forgot. At this point, you want to turn it inside out. Some people would cinch it right side out. I prefer doing it the other way around. So before we get any further, I'm just going to feed this in through the center. And I'm going to hang on to the toe and I'm going to pull this inside out because I want the cinched portion to be on the inside so that from the outside, oh, look at all my tails that still need to be woven in. Okay, so we've turned our stocking inside out. And we are now simply just going to feed it in through the stitches, in and then out. So you're just weaving this in back and forth, in and out, just along the top of the stitch. You can pull through. You don't want to cinch it tight just yet, so just keep it relaxed. And then you go into the very next stitch in and then out. Whoops. In and then out all the way around. Okay. And so there I'm going in and feeding it out. And the next one is right there and out. And just about there. In and out, and that's where I started. Okay, so once you've got it fed, now you're going to pull and you're gonna cinch that center shut. And those of you that did the mittens tutorial with me or any of the hat tutorials, You'll know that this is a common way we cinch up the top. Look at that. Beautiful. So what I want to do now with my leftover yarn is I'm just going to feed it back and forth a few times. Um, I'm going to start crossways first. And this will just help solidify the closure. So I cinch that in there. And then I might go in from east to west and just cinch that in. I don't want to go in too deep because I don't want it to show on the outside. Whoops. There we go. So I'll do that a bunch of times, as many times as you feel comfortable, and then I'll start to kind of hide it in there and maybe knot it as I go. So before it cinches too tight, I will then just feed it through so that it creates a knot. Okay. And that is my last one, I think. I'm happy with that. So now I'm just going to 
snip off my yarn and our stocking is pretty much done. And then of course you want to weave in those ends, but let's see what we've got here. Oops. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. So it cinched it in really nicely. Look at that. Love it. So now you're going to sit your stocking down flat here and you've got your stocking. So we've got, we've just finished the toe. We did the foot, the heel, the leg portion. You've got your cuff already done. Love it. Now, if you would like, you can go ahead and monogram your stocking. And I did one I did a monogram last year with the stocking I did last year, and I'll put that uh, link in the description box down below if you want to add a monogram to your work, or I'm also going to place it somewhere up here in the cards, and you can click on that and find it there. So here we have our stocking worked from the cuff down. Now, you may be absolutely finished and happy with that, and I'm happy for you, but we're gonna add a few more embellishments at the end. Not to mention we need to add the hook to hang it from, and we're gonna add a little bit of a tie with a pom-pom embellishment, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and beef up our cuff just a little bit more. So, if you're happy with the way yours is, and you wanna leave it there, you are good to go. Otherwise, stick around. We're going to add a couple more little add-ons to our stocking. Okay, so we're going to beef up our cuff. Now, you don't have to do this if you're happy with it the way it is. It looks nice just as well. But I am going to beef up our cuff a little bit with some more of that blue trim. So I'm going to go around the top and add the blue back in just to give her an anchor because I feel like there's blue at the very bottom and uh, blue at the very top. For me, I feel would look really good. So I am going to go back to my eight millimeter hook and I'm only going to do a single strand. So I am going to start with a slip knot and I'm going to start at the point where I'm going to make that little uh, loop to hang it by. So remember how when we first started the cuff, this first slip stitch round ended up being a little bit longer. This is perfect because that's where we're going to attach the loop through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just in the space between it. Now we're working into the sides of stitches. So what I'm going to do for the top is I'm going to work in between the colors. So I'm going to start right about here and just snuggle my hook in and attach it with a slip knot. And I am gonna use single crochets here. So I'm gonna chain one, and I'm gonna single crochet back into that same space. Okay, so that one's gonna be like that for now. Now I'm gonna go into the next space between the colors, which is right here. And what I'm gonna do is I am gonna insert my hook, and I'm gonna place two single crochets in these spaces. So there's one. I'm gonna go back into that same space and do my second one. And I'm gonna work over that little tail while I go. Next, I'm gonna go into the next space between the two colors, so anywhere around here. I'm gonna insert my hook. I'm gonna dip it in a bit lower and do two single crochets. And that's what we're gonna do all the way around the top so you get a look that something like that and I just like I like the fact that the blue just seems to anchor the whole thing down so I'm going to go into the next one do a few more with you and instead of going right at the top I, I'm just always going one below that just to really nestle those stitches in there so we have one single crochet and right back into that same space do two single crochets now I'm not being too loose, but I'm also, again, not being too tight, okay? Into the next space between the two colors, single crochet, and again, single crochet. So 
at this point, you can see the effect of the blue. Okay, and don't worry, it's gonna flare out a little bit because we're snuggling two stitches in between there, but that's gonna make it look a lot more substantial. So if you are coming along with me and doing the top border of the cuff, you're gonna go all the way around and I'm gonna meet you just as we come up to here because I'm gonna go over with you how we're gonna add that loop at the very end. Okay, and I'm just coming up to my last one here. And I think one is just perfect. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna go over here, I'm gonna slip stitch to join. And now I'm actually, so see how I left that little tail out? I'm now going to turn it and insert my hook into that somewhere along there if I can find a spot. Sometimes I just have to loosen it up with a, another hook there. There we go. Just gonna insert it. There we go. And then I'm gonna just slip stitch. Might be a bit tricky and tight. So, I'm going to use my smaller hook just to slip stitch out of there. And now I'm going to chain 10. I'm actually going to use my smaller hook to create tighter chains. And this is a five millimeter hook in case you're wondering. So you might only need 10. I'm gonna do a chain of 20. Okay, once you have the, the chain length that you're happy with, and so just hold it together and I figured that's gonna be a nice, nice hook size depending on where you're hanging it. Now we're gonna go back into our original stitch here, our little loop, see that? And we're gonna slip stitch to join. Might be a little testy. Might be tight through there. Whoops. Just like that. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to cut off. Leave a bit of a tail because you'll want to weave that tail in to continue to secure it, just like that. Okay, so now you've got your, your loop and your nice border on your cuff, okay? And I will probably weave this in back and forth just to kind of make it extra secure. Because this is such a, um, a generous size, stocking, um, you may want to fill it with lots of goodies that will create a bit of weight. So as you can see now, our cuff just has that nice anchoring with the dark blue there. We've now formed our loop. And again, if you're happy with it as is, you can leave it exactly like that. 
but I am still going to add that one more embellishment. I'm going to add a little tie here with some pom-poms just to kind of give it a finishing look. And then I promise you, for me on my end, I am done with my stocking. So happy with that. Okay, so to create our tie here, and actually for me, I mean, you can make your front any which side you like, whether it's, it's this side or it's that side, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna attach it right on the edge here, right next to the loop. So it doesn't matter which way you hang it, it will always show. So what you wanna do is you wanna create a chain length. Uh, you wanna create a chained tie. Um, so I chained a length of 40 chains. Again, depending on how tightly you chain, um, you wanna measure this, because you're then gonna to wanna to bend this in half because we're gonna attach it right there and then our pom-poms will hang from that, just like that, okay? So you want it uneven. Let me just take these tails out. So one will be longer and one will be shorter. So just before it's hitting the heel there, I thought that was a good, good length for the longest pom-pom and I've left these long tails so that I can attach my pom-pom on there. Okay, so just a quick little refresher. You can use a smaller hook size if you like, if you want it tighter. I went back down to my uh, 6.5 millimeter hook for these. And you just start with a slip knot. But for this one, I'm gonna leave my starting tail a bit longer because that's where I'm gonna attach my pom-poms, okay? So, Started with my slip knot and I've got an extra long tail, okay? And then I chain the number of chains that I feel I need for my stocking. And for mine, I am chaining a total of 40. And when I'm done, I'm gonna cut my yarn and leave a long tail just like this one so that I'll have something to secure my pom-pom to. So go ahead and do that and then we'll do the pom-pom. Okay, so we are almost there. So on to the pom-pom. I am actually gonna mix my blue and my silver together. So I'm going to take them both and work with them at the same time. Now, of course, absolutely, there are probably a thousand or a million different ways to do pom-poms. There's even pom-pom makers out there. I just like to keep it plain and simple. I don't make pom-poms that often, so I find this method is easy peasy to work with. So just to show you how I'm gonna do mine, I have the two strands and all I'm gonna do, holding them together, okay? I'm just gonna wrap them loosely around my hand, my fingers, approximately 16 times, okay? So, very similar to how I did the tassel for the autumn wrap, for those of you that saw that tutorial. So one time consists of going from the bottom and up all the way back to the bottom. So this would now be one and two, okay? So you just do it as many times as you need. I think I've already done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I think 12 is gonna be good for me because I am also using a bulkier yarn. Um, depending on how cushy you want your pom-poms to be, I'm gonna leave that up to you. Um, well, maybe I'll go 13, 14, 15, and 16. So once you've got the length that you like done, you're gonna cut off your yarn and leave a bit of a tail, and I'm gonna show you why. So I'm just gonna shimmy this down my hands, and that tail that I left, I'm just going to feed it through. <laughs> Hopefully you can see this. This is my own little method here. In between my two middle fingers, and I'm actually gonna use my hook, I'm gonna bring it up through. 
and I'm just going to pull that down through there so it comes out through here. See that? And then I'm just going to wrap it around. So see what's happening there? And I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to feed it up through the middle. I know this, this might be the most unconventional way you've seen it done, but gets the job done. So now it's there. Now I'm going to cinch it and take out my fingers. So it actually looks like a cute little bow tie, which by the way, da da DIY bow tie on your wreath on other Christmas things done deal. That's like a four second DIY. <laughs> but what we're going to do is the pom pom. So right now we need to make sure I've secured it like that. And now I'm going to take my smaller hook and now just kind of go in a little bit and feed it in through there so that it's kind of getting knotted in there, right? So I'm just going to pull that up through. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to pull it through a bit. So see how it creates a loop just like that. And before I pull the whole thing through, I'm going to loop it through there. So now it's going to knot exactly how I want it. So just pull that tight. And now it is good to go. Okay, you may want to do it a little bit tighter, however it's comfortable for you. Okay. And actually, if you want to, you can just leave it like that. But what we're now going to do is with your scissors, you're going to go in through where the, the, the loops are. You're just going to snip them just like that. And you keep going until all of your loops are snipped. Make sure you get them all. Oops, I can feel there's a few still left behind. Sometimes they're hidden in there. Make sure you got them all. So now you got this fun little pom-pom. And now all you do is you trim it down to size, okay? Okay, so here are my two pom-poms, and I just realized that the last few minutes I was recording how to attach, um, my camera stopped recording, which is annoying. So basically that long tail I had, um, you're going to have two long tails left over here. I just uh, tied the two blue tails together, knotted them twice, and then took one of the blue tails and knotted it with the silver. Um... I think you guys can pretty much figure out how to knot them together. So, um, but I know a lot of times people just are very visual and they'd like to see it. So my apologies, the camera stopped recording and I didn't realize it. So hopefully that explanation helps you and your strand should look something like this. And of course you can, you can keep trimming pom-poms till the cows come home. Um, it's always a personal preference. So once you have your pom-pom done, and for be forewarned, it does create a big old mess, as you can see in my pile over here. And the final touch is just to attach this to the edge, to the anchor there of our cuff. And that'll just create this cute little add-on. Yeah, I'm very happy that I added that last little bit here. Some people don't like that, but um, I really like it and I'm happy that I did it. So the idea is to kind of leave them a little bit uneven. You don't want them sitting evenly. You want one a little shorter than the other. And then you're just gonna get a darning needle and we're just going to do a small little whip stitch. We're gonna do that right now. Okay, so I just took a piece of yarn that I had from one of the tails from before, some little leftovers. And this right here is about, I don't know, 10 inches, eight inches. Should be plenty to uh, whip stitch our pom-poms together. So 
You're just going to find a spot somewhere and insert your darning needle, just like that, and find the spot you want to insert it. I want to make sure it's somewhere along the seam, so no matter which side I put the palm, uh, sorry, the stocking facing that it will face out. So see, my, my fold naturally sits there, and so I'm just going to place my darning needle in through there, just like that, and I'm going to feed it through. And actually, I'm going to leave this a little bit long. And you know what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to just knot it. And that's right. You know how much I love my knots. So I'm just going to do a second one. And that sits so nicely because it looks like it's just feeding right down from the blue and into the pom-poms. Love that. So now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, just kind of go back and forth a few times just to secure it. I mean, it's already secure, but basically, whoops, I lost my thing. Basically, now the job is to hide the tail. And that's it. That's all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed it in. Whoops. And out. That was my slip stitch join. Whoops, sorry about the lighting, guys. See that? That was our slip stitch join when we brought the cuff together. So that's a great place. If my camera would focus. It's a great place to hide that tail. That silver yarn is really something. Okay. So I'm just going to keep doing that. And then... I will feed it in through the back. So that it stays there. Beautiful. And this one I'm just going to feed this way. And then I'll feed it in through the back. And then these two can get knotted together. And we are done. Look at that. So I'm just going to go on the inside, see where these are. Just for an added something, I'm just going to knot them together. And whoops snip it off and we are done guys our holiday Christmas stocking we worked from the cuff down so you can see there's the loop that you're going to hang it by we've got pom-poms on there we work through the heel up through the toe and there it is super super happy with it so this is definitely a larger stocking you can make them a little smaller if you want, obviously, but I like how this one came out. Super excited. I hope you guys have enjoyed working on this one. This one's been really um, extra fun to work on, and especially if you're making this for little ones for Christmas time. It's super, um, it's super, it's extra super sweet because it is so deep, and it's always fun to watch them reach right into the bottom of the toe to, um, pick out their gifts. So I hope you've enjoyed this. And if you have any questions, you know you can always leave me a comment or a question in the comment box down below. You can also always email me directly at info at crochetcrafty.com. And if you haven't pressed that subscribe button, make sure you do so so you'll never miss any of our upload tutorials or crochet conversations. I always love having you come along on my crochet journey and I look forward to sharing more of my crochet fun with you next week. In the, and if you're interested in checking out any of, of our other Christmas crochet tutorials, just check out this link up here. And we'll also put a link in the description box down below. In the meantime, everyone, happy crocheting and take care.